Hi, it's Lisa from America's Test Kitchen Gearheads, and I'm here to answer some of your questions about our recent pizza video and all the equipment we use to make great pizza at home. So let's get started. Um, okay, we had a couple of comments saying things like $30 for four tiles, go to the hardware store and get four unglazed tiles for eight to ten dollars. Um, I've seen a lot of suggestions like that and it might work out, but one thing you have to be careful about is that the tiles you buy are food safe. Um, so some of them have various chemicals and things in them that you don't want to put food on and cook it. Um, there's a famous old story about Julia Child. Um, she was baking bread at home and Paul Child brought her home these asbestos tiles from the hardware store and she baked beautiful bread on them. Well, the tile part worked, but you know, you don't want asbestos in your bread or pizza. So <laughs> word of caution, I would go for the ones that are actually made for food preparation. Um, it's great to save a couple of dollars, but I'd rather be safe. Um, Somewhat, another person said, heads up ATK, the pizza aficionados in your audience have already switched to cooking pizzas on an uni pizza oven. Yeah, we love those too. We tested them and um, there was a whole review of outdoor pizza ovens, those little portable size ones, they're really awesome. Um, and we have a lot of details about those on, in a review on our website, americastestkitchen.com. Um, another thing we also love is the Breville Pizzaiolo oven, which is, um, a countertop oven. It's pretty expensive. It's almost a thousand dollars, but boy, does it do a good job. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of different ways you make pizza at home. We also have a great cast iron pan pizza recipe that everybody loves. So, and Chicago deep dish pizza, you know, and you make them in a cake pan. It's, so there's billions of kinds of pizza. Um, we were purely looking at the kind that you would, you know, kind of a thin crust style there. Um, have fun, however you want to make your pizza. <laughs> Okay, someone pointed out the best feature of the tiles is they can make pizza in their toaster oven or make smaller personal pizzas in the same oven. Um, and that's true. That's the great thing about those individual tiles. They are easier to store and to use, but you can like put two of them in your toaster oven. You can use them, um, yeah, you can use them separately and make everybody their own little pizza. <laughs> it's really nice because you can kind of customize it to fit your space and what you're going to make. Um, I used them in a countertop oven as well, and they were they were great. Um, okay, someone pointed out they love their steel and making pizza is great, but bread is, oh my God, amazing. Yeah, um, I baked bread on all of the stones and steels when I was testing them, and I agree. It makes a beautiful crust, and especially with the steels, you get that same kind of oven spring where it's really intensely hot and, and uh, makes this beautiful crisp crust, which if you're like me, I'm all about the crusty part on the outside. <laughs> so uh, I totally agree. We also have a recipe where we put the baking stone or steel under a roasting pan and roast a whole turkey, which is kind of lovely because that problem of getting the dark meat and the light meat to cook at the same time without overcooking the white meat, which, you know, has to be cooked to 165 and the, the dark meat is like 175 or 180. And so you run into this problem where the dark meat isn't cooked yet and the white is getting dried out. By putting it in the roasting pan on a baking stone or steel that you've preheated, um, it accelerates the dark meat and it all comes out at the same time. It's a recipe on our site, Cook's Illustrated Lom Lom. It's a recipe and it's great. Um, yet another use for your pizza stone or steel. Um, someone said, thank you for this episode of Gearheads. You're welcome. <laughs> they said, uh, pizza making videos always show margarita or New York style pizzas. They just have sauce and cheese and sometimes salami. But if, as a vegetarian, I like adding vegetables. Do you have any advice on how to bake it so I get as good results as yours? One of the things we learned was that um, you don't want to put too much on because you can sog out the crust. So for hearty vegetables, Aim for a maximum of six ounces per pie, spread out in a single layer. Um, yeah, sure, get your scale and weigh it, but it's not much. You really look at that amount and you realize that if you put too much on there, it's just gonna be a big soggy mess and uh, they give off a lot of liquid. So vegetables like onions, peppers, mushrooms should be thinly sliced and you can even lightly saute or microwave them for a minute or two along with some olive oil before using them to get rid of some of that moisture and to start the you know cooking process. 
delicate vegetables and herbs like leafy greens, um, spinach, basil, are best placed beneath the cheese to protect them. And, or they can be added raw to the fully cooked pizza. It tastes really great. Um, and you were asking about vegetables. We also have a little bit of advice about putting meats on. No more than four ounces of protein per pie. It all should be pre-cooked and drained to remove the excess fat. Um, we believe in like poached meats like sausage broken up into half inch chunks or pepperoni or ground beef for four to five minutes in a wide skillet with a quarter cup of water and that helps to render the fat while keeping the meat moist hopefully that's helpful um you know we actually did those tests and we really wanted to know like how to get the best toppings on your pizza without just getting a big mess i have gotten pizzas like that where the whole middle is just soup Ugh. You don't want that. So hope that's helpful. And I hope we'll see you next time on Gearheads.